Hello, it's Keith from Kinvert, and in this video I'm going to be going over basically start to finish how to get something through Slick 3R. Uh, we're going to start by loading the config. It's very important to load the right one, file, load config, and in this case I'm going to be using the highest number delta that I have. In this case it's delta 1. Another common one that we use for in-person classes is I3. These are INI files, which are the config files. Um, if you're doing this at home, you, you should have your own config file somewhere. I, I have no idea what you're using, but in our in-person classes, we tend to use Delta and I3. I'm going to go with Delta so that you see that it loads kind of a circle size bed. All right, I'm going to get the view going here. I'm going to add the model in. So I click Add, find my model. I'll add in this creeper. And now what I want to do is scale this so I can go to scale. I want this to be about 50 millimeters tall and currently it's 26 millimeters tall so I'm going to scale it to say 180. Scale that up and now each of these squares is 10 millimeters so I can say 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So it's a little less than 50 millimeters. I look over here it's 18 or almost 19 by 47 by 14. So this is smaller than 50 millimeters. For in-person classes this matters. For you scale it how you want to, right? But in our case, if it's about 50 millimeters in size, it takes about a half hour to print, and we've got a lot of kids printing in our classes. We, we can have some very full classes, so it's important to keep the print times down. Um, I think that, you know, maybe you want to aim for less than, say, 9,000. You don't want to go greater than 9,000. That's crazy for the volume if you're in one of our classes. If you're printing this to fit something else that you've already made, and they have to fit together properly, it's probably important to keep it at exactly 100% scale. So that's scaling. Uh, now what we want to do is check to make sure this is level on the bed. So you can give it a glance, but the glance won't always work. So we're going to go to preview. Now if you look at this preview, this is properly flat on the bed. This is called a skirt, this green area going the whole way around. This is printed to make sure that there are no air bubbles in the nozzle when you start the print, because you don't want that air bubble to be in the actual print itself. Um, sometimes you'll see when it actually does print, there might be some of the skirt doesn't print, that's okay. So that's a sign that the print is level and on the bed, or the design is. Now I can go all the way to the first layer and just kind of scroll up from the bottom layer up a little bit, and we see that nothing's really changing much, like the model isn't jumping. Now I'm going to show you an example of a print that is not level. So I'm going to right click on this and say rotate don't do this, I'm just showing you something. I'm going to rotate it by literally only one degree. And you barely even saw it move. And if you look at it, it looks pretty level, right? You'd have to really get a perfect view to quite see that it's not level. So visual doesn't work great. Right. You really want to go to preview. Now you see that that skirt does not go the whole way around the model. That is an indicator that the model is not level on the bed. Now we can grab this and drag it down. And look at the difference now between the first, second, third layers. See that? that tells you it's not level. If the model's not level on the bed, it is not going to print right. It's crucial that the whole model is level with the bed, at least for that first layer. You want that whole bottom footprint. You would have wanted all this perfectly on the first layer. So this is not level. Generally, if it's not level, you might have to go to the CAD software. I'm going to try to fix it in here. I'm going to say rotate around x axis. Can I just hit down, go to negative one degree, hit OK. It doesn't seem to have moved. So I'm going to rotate it 359 degrees is a little goofy, but um, and then I go back to the preview and it should be level on the bed and it is. So that's good. All right, and then we can double check it right here. So we see it's level on the bed. We can now head over and check on this and see that the config is in fact loaded and proper. So print settings, filament, printer, all the stuff is set properly to Delta 1 in our case because this is what we would probably use in an in-person class. And then we want to check the size, make sure it looks right. For in-person convert classes, we aim for parts a little bit smaller than 50 millimeters to make sure that enough kids have a chance to print. If it's much bigger than that, it's going to take, say, an hour to print, and that ties up the printers for too long. So we've gone around, done our sanity checks, made, through every, made sure everything's ready. We're now ready to export the G-code. So you go over here, click Export G-code, and give the file a name. Now there's so many creeper files in here that I'm going to add some stuff. And just remember where the file's going, remember the name, remember the file path, because you're going to need to know that later. We save. 
and there's your G code. You're at the point now where all you got to do is get this G code theoretically into your printer. In our case, for in person classes, we use SD cards to go into the printers. And so you're going to want to get the SD card into the computer, find your file in a Windows uh, folder. So you can hold Windows E to open the folder up, navigate through the folders, and find your file. For example, for us, it's in Documents 3D and then the student name and then your file should be right in there. Drag and drop that into the SD card folder and then before you pull out the SD card make sure that you go to the bottom right of the screen there's like a USB symbol thing with a green check mark click that and make sure you safely eject the SD card click that in the screen before you pull out the SD card you don't want to corrupt the SD card now you're ready to head over and pop that SD card in the printer hopefully and get that printing some people use Repetier Host and different things um, in our classes we use the SD cards. So this is Keith from Kinvert. We went over how to set things up in Slicer, Slick3R in this case, and uh, bring in the model, load the config, scale it, make sure it's flat and level, do the final sanity check, and uh, yeah, export the G-code. So this is part of our online course for 3D printing in CAD. Hope you found this helpful, and we will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.